German Infantrymen versus British Infantrymen, 1940, World War II. In the spring of 1940, the British and German army confronted each other on a full scale in the Battle of France. By rapidly defeating its more numerous enemies in only 46 days, the German infantry proved to be better prepared and organized than their British, French, Dutch, and Belgian counterparts. When World War II began, the Germans had the advantage of having a better prepared army, as German soldiers were being prepared for war from their adolescence. By joining the Hitler Youth, they were familiarized with uniforms and military life. Years spent in the paramilitary Hitler Youth had prepared German men well for when they were recruited and sent for 16 weeks training at the Airsatz Battalion, which focused on instilling greater discipline in recruits. This basic training taught them how to maintain and use their weapons, march in formation, clean their uniforms, read maps, write military reports, estimate ranges, and dig trenches. After their initial training, recruits were sent to their units where they received more practical combat training. Infantry recruits were trained in handling all kinds of infantry weapons, with field exercises conducted with live ammunition. They also endured intense physical drills according to the dictum, sweat saves blood. Most importantly, their training shaped the minds of these young men to embrace the idea that Germany was a nation destined to rule the world. Such an approach was foreign to British democratic society, which was still reeling from the recent horrors of World War I. Financial difficulties require the British Army to be a small professional force, known as the British Expeditionary Force, which was primarily used to police the vast British Empire. Accordingly, the British paid much more attention to its navy than its army. In the interwar years, the British Army had been entirely voluntary based. However, in May 1939, the British government introduced military conscription that required all men aged 20 to 22 to go through six months of training. Once the Germans invaded Poland in September 1939, the National Service Act expanded conscription to all men aged 18 to 41. It was clear that Britain was not prepared for war. By the end of 1939, Britain had mobilized one million men. However, this was nothing in comparison to the Germans, who had militarized an entire society in preparation for war. Moreover, the British soldiers were not trained enough when they were deployed to the European continent. German soldiers were not only well-trained, but also well-equipped. The standard field uniforms for infantrymen were designated as the Model 1936. It consisted of a field gray blouse, which was a traditional German color for uniforms, and slate gray trousers tucked into nail-studded jackboots. The M34 sidecap was also colored in field gray. When in the battle zone, the sidecap was replaced with the model 1935 steel helmet Stahlhelm. The helmet was made of 1.1 to 1.2 millimeter thick steel sheet. It was made in four different sizes, weighing up to 1.34 kilograms. Around his waist, the German soldier wore a belt with a buckle with the inscription Gott mit uns, or God with us. The belt of a German soldier held two ammunition pouches, each holding 30 rounds, a musette bag for holding food rations and rifle cleaning tools, a hand spade that was used for digging trenches as well as for hand-to-hand -hand combat, an M1938 gas mask packed inside a tin container, a sidearm holster, and a water flask. The total weight of the belt and additional equipment was around 8 kilograms, or 17.6 pounds. Shoulder straps were also attached to the belt, which had cooking utensils attached, and a camouflage pattern tent square. Besides its primary role to build a tent, it also served as a raincoat and improvised stretcher. The British made an 11th hour change to their uniform. In 1937, just two years prior to the outbreak of the war, they discarded the service dress which was a combined field and dress uniform used since 1902. The new uniform, known as the battle dress, was to be worn by British and Commonwealth soldiers. The battle dress was modeled on ski suits and designed specifically to suit the needs of modern mechanized warfare. It was loose fitting to allow for free movement, and it was designed to suit vehicular movement rather than horseback transport and remained warm even when wet. The uniform itself consisted of a short jacket and high-waisted trousers, both made of waterproof wool serge. It was dyed a light khaki color, making it more visible on the battlefields of Western Europe than the German uniform. The 
problem with the uniform was that when crawling or running, a gap between the short jacket and trousers opened, leaving the soldier exposed. Unfortunately, the new uniform appeared so late that many soldiers were sent to France wearing the old service dress. Moreover, older officers were extremely hostile to the new battle dress. The only piece of equipment that remained unchanged was the Brody Mark II helmet, nicknamed the Salad Bowl. The Brody helmet was an obsolete design that was better suited to the trench warfare of World War I. Indeed, its distinctive shape was designed to prevent shrapnel falling onto soldiers' heads and shoulders in the trenches. The 1937 pattern web equipment was used to carry equipment and was made from cotton webbing. It was also standard issue for British and Commonwealth troops. It was dyed in khaki but could then be dyed with Blanco, which made it waterproof and malleable, and turned it to a pea green shade. It consisted of the belt, shoulder straps, ammunition pouches, a gas mask pack worn on the chest, carriers for a water flask and a small pack, a carrier for a small spade, a bayonet sheath known as a frog, a medium-sized rectangular haversack on the back to store food and other utensils. And depending on the army branch, there were various combinations to fit their other needs. Since it was a somewhat hasty solution, 1937 web equipment was unpopular among many officers, NCOs, and soldiers. They regarded it as clumsy, uncomfortable, and mobility restricting. The light infantry weapons that German soldiers carried in the Western Front were the M1884 98 bayonet, the M1924 stick grenade. The Steilhandgranate was a distinctive German grenade that had a stick attached to a powder charge canister. The stick allowed it to be thrown larger distances. Another grenade that the Germans used was the M1939 hand grenade. The Luger, Parabellum P08, and Walther P38. These pistols were carried by officers and NCOs, heavy weapons crews, and medics. Both were powerful pistols that could shoot through any helmet at a 10-meter distance. The MP38 and MP40, a standard German submachine gun designed to meet the needs of mechanized units. The Mauser Carabiner 98K, the standard weapon of the German infantrymen throughout the entire war. The letter K stands for Kurtz, short, as the rifle was much shorter than previous versions and was better for handling in combat. The MG-34, the first ever general-purpose machine gun, as it could be used both as a light and heavy machine gun when put on a tripod. It had a rapid rate of fire of 1,200 rounds per minute. The British arsenal of infantry weapons at the beginning of the war also showed how poorly they were prepared for the war. The SMLE No. 1 Bayonet, a sword-type bayonet with a length of 18 inches. The No. 36M Mills Fragmentation Grenade, and No. 69 Mark I Blast Grenade. The Enfield No. 2 Mark I and Webley Mark IV, two rare service revolvers of World War II. They were actually modified versions of the revolvers from the First World War era, designed to fire a 38 round. The M1928 Thompson. At the time of the invasion of France in 1940, the Sten submachine gun wasn't yet in service. Since the British had no submachine guns of their own, they were importing M1928 Thompsons from the United States. Although a quality weapon, the M1928 was expensive. For that reason, it was not deployed to units in as great a number as the MP38 and MP40 were. The SMLE No. 1 Rifle the British Army entered the Second World War with the same rifle as it practically was in the First World War, the SMLE No. 1 rifle, which fired a standard British 303 round. It had a 10-round capacity, which gave it an advantage over the German Car 98K's 5-round capacity. As the war went on, it was replaced with the new model Lee Enfield No. 4. The Bren light machine gun. The Bren was the finest piece of weaponry that the British infantrymen were equipped with. It was an Enfield modification of the Czech ZB-26 machine gun that fired standard British 303 rounds. It was a good weapon that suited modern tactics. During the invasion of France, the German tactic was to make swift attacks against enemy units using great firepower to overrun them. This tactic emphasized the use of machine guns, which were deployed on a section level. German regiments were trained to be tactically self-sufficient in operations and therefore had more freedom in acting than their British counterparts. Finally, German victories were achieved in 1940 because of the full cooperation with all the branches of the German army. 
Indeed, one of the primary roles of the German infantry was to mop up resistance left behind the Panzer divisions, which rapidly pushed through the Allied defenses in their Blitzkrieg attacks. After a successful Blitzkrieg campaign in Poland, the morale of the German soldier was very high. Therefore, their high spirits could not be matched by the Allied troops. Similarly, as the campaign in France progressed, the continued success of the German Blitzkrieg meant that German morale grew further still. Even though the British embraced the tactics of mechanized infantry, they still stuck to traditional positional warfare and were unprepared for the speed of the German advances. This was especially so as the French had prepared for a defensive war along the Maginot Line, a vast string of fortresses in the northwest of France. As the war was being fought on French soil, the British had no choice but to cooperate. Ultimately, the British and French completely neglected the fact that warfare had dramatically changed and modernized since the conclusion of World War I. Indeed, the British and French aimed to repeat tactics from that war by halting the German advance in Belgium. However, when the German attack began and their panzer tanks penetrated the Allied defensive lines, the British and French realized that their plan was not going to work. The Germans simply chose to bypass the heavily fortified Maginot Line and attack through the Ardennes, a tactic which left thousands of French soldiers now stranded behind enemy lines. Once the Allied soldiers realized that the German assault had been successful, their morale plummeted. As a result, the Allied forces were pushed towards the English Channel, and the English were miraculously evacuated from Dunkirk. However, this cannot hide the fact that the Allied campaign in France was an unmitigated disaster. Hey, Simple History fans! If you're looking for a better way to support the channel and help us create more epic content, consider becoming a member on our channel. Becoming a member means that for just 5 bucks a month, you'll get these amazing perks. You'll be the first to see new episodes with early access. You can watch new episodes before anyone else with this perk. The Enlisted Badge, a custom icon that shows alongside your username in the comments section and in live chat. As a member, you'll become an influencer with member-only comments. You can communicate directly with us and help us pick the topics that we'll do next on Simple History. And remember, it's not mandatory to become a member. Our videos will continue to be uploaded as usual. Thank you for letting us feed your hunger for history.